What up, humans? Karumi here, and welcome to the Mobile Legends Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to talk about the mage hero, Luo Yi. Luo Yi has a good set of burst buff, area of effect, crowd control, and a team huddle without social distancing skill. Our yin yang gem answer, Luo Yi is a mage hero. I consider Luo Yi as a support mage hero since her skills lets her slow down and crowd control enemies. Not only that, her ultimate skill can make her teleport to a designated location along with the allies beside her. Now, let me share some tips and tricks on how to use Luo Yi based on our experience. We will also teach you some combos and techniques on the latter part of this bootcamp. But before that, let me explain her skills one by one for further understanding. Luo Yi's Passive Duality Let's Luo Yi create a mark of yin and yang on the battlefield. Depending on the skill she uses, the yin or yang mark can either stick to the target, or stay in a designated area which lasts for a few moments. When two or more bearers of the opposite mark come close to each other, a yin-yang reaction happens and pulls them to each other. This reaction will deal magic damage and will be stunning them for a short period. This is also applied to yin-yang marks lying on the ground. Each time she applies a new mark to a mark bearer, she gains a shield and an additional movement speed. Luo Yi's first skill, Dispersion, lets Luo Yi cast the energy of yin or yang towards a designated direction. The energy shot will be dispersing upon hitting an enemy, and will deal magic damage to the target and enemies behind in a fan-shaped area. Enemies hit will receive the mark of yin or yang depending on the state of the skill used. The state of yin or yang changes upon casting this skill. This skill instances can stack up to 4 charges which is gained every few seconds. She also gains a stack each time a yin-yang reaction happens. Luo Yi's second skill, Rotation. Let's Luo Yi summon fire of Yin Yang in a designated area. Enemies hit initially by this skill will receive magic damage and will reduce their movement speed for a short period. Enemies within the skill's radius will receive continuous magic damage as long as they stay in the area of effect. While this skill is in the battlefield, this skill can cause a yin-yang reaction to enemies nearby, if they have opposite charge than what the casted skill has. Take note that the state of this skill also changes upon every cast. Luo Yi's ultimate skill, Diversion, lets Luo Yi create a teleport circle around her. Upon using this skill, a teleport circle is created around her. After a few seconds, she sends allied heroes inside the circle to the specified location in the battlefield. The range of this skill increases depending on this skill's level. Also, this skill's passive decreases Luo Yi's skill's cooldown. There are so many items that you can buy for Luo Yi. You can focus on items that grant magic damage cooldown reduction, slowing effects and items that gives you extra damage. You can actually consider the Kamyu Hamyu build if you want to focus on more magic damage dealing. You can also consider the Dewport build if you chose to be a roamer ganker support. But let's talk about the Kurumi way further. As for starting item, you can consider buying a wooden roaming mask if you want to support your teammates on their farming. This is only optional, but if ever Muntun buffs roaming items again, then this is a must buy. For your kicks, you can consider buying Demon Shoes. Demon Shoes grants mana regeneration and movement speed. Its unique passive regenerates your mana upon eliminating minions. It also regenerates your mana upon killing an enemy hero or assisting an ally. You can consider buying Ice Queen Wand. 
This item gives additional magic power, magical life steal, mana, and movement speed. Its unique passive lets you slow down an enemy when your skill hits them. The slowing effect lasts for a few seconds and stacks up to two times. You might want to consider fleeting time. This item grants you additional magic power and cooldown reduction. Its unique passive grants your ultimate skill cooldown to be instantly reduced by a certain percentage after an elimination or an assist. You also might want to consider Glowing Wand. This item grants magic power, health points, and movement speed. Its unique passive lets the enemy target hit by your skill be burned per second, depending on the target's maximum health points. Another magic item to consider is Necklace of Durance. This item grants magic power, cooldown reduction, and magic lifesteal. Its unique passive reduces the regeneration effects of enemies damaged by your skills. Lastly, you might want to consider Blood Wings. This item grants magic power and health points. Its unique passive grant you additional health points for every magic power added to your stats. The item build for Luo Yi really depends on the enemy's lineup. So make sure to read each item's description so you can adapt in-game. One of the best spells to be used on Luo Yi is Flame Shot. Using this spell will knock back enemies hit near you reduce their movement speed, and will deal certain amount of magic damage. This will be helpful especially when enemies try approaching you. You can also consider Sprint. This can really help you run from danger or chase enemies. In my opinion, you can consider two emblem sets depending on your role. If you are going for a mage role, then the best emblem set to be used is the custom mage emblem set. Custom Mage Emblem could provide extra stats according to your needs as Burst Mage. Set Agility to its max level because it can give you additional movement speed. Higher movement speed means higher chance to chase enemies or escape death. Setting Observation to max level will provide additional magic penetration on your skills. Higher magic penetration deals more magic damage to enemies. That means your skills will be more explosive. Get Magic Worship to deal more magic damage to the enemies. When dealing damage that is more than a certain percentage of target's max HP for 3 times in 5 seconds, the target will receive a burning effect. This burning effect burns the target for 3 times. This effect has a cooldown of 12 seconds. Now, if you are going for a support role, then the best emblem set to be used is the custom support emblem set. Custom support emblem could provide extra stats according to your needs as a mage support. Set agility to its max level because it can give you additional movement speed. Higher movement speed means higher chance to chase enemies or escape death. Setting Rupture to max level will provide hybrid penetration. Higher hybrid penetration means you can deal more damage to enemies. That means your enemy will feel your wrath as a mage damager. Get Focusing Mark to increase the damage dealt of your allies to your target after dealing damage to that enemy. This effect has a short cooldown. Set first skill to max level first. Prioritizing this makes the recharging time of this skill lower. That means, you can easily achieve full stack to spam on those enemies. Prioritize second skill less since your first skill is what you need for better damage dealing. Always upgrade your ultimate skill when available for upgrading. Luo Yi's passive skill is what you need to crowd control enemies. Every time an enemy with a yin or yang mark comes near with a hero that has an opposite mark or an area that has an opposite mark, they will be pulled to each other and will be stunned and dealt with magic damage. This is really effective in terms of crowd controlling since the enemies will be pulled to each other, ready to be served for breakfast. The passive is best used when you are chasing an enemy or trying to escape death. Not only that, the shield granted by marking an enemy that already has a mark will help you survive team fights. With your first skill's fast cooldown, you can gain a shield continuously to protect yourself from your ex. Luo Yi's first skill is what you need to deal damage to enemies. The energy being shot by Luo Yi is either yin or yang. As mentioned earlier, the state changes each every cast of this skill. Casting this skill is best during team fights, since when the energy hits an enemy, it will disperse behind the enemy in a fan-shaped area. Take note that this skill has a short cooldown, so, you can abuse spamming this into a single target that you want to disappear in this world. Just like maybe your ex. This skill stacks up to 4 times and each stack is aimed after a few seconds. 
Also, you can gain a stack every time a yin yang reaction happens. Lastly, since this skill has no slowing effects, it is really recommended to buy Ice Queen Wand so that you can easily reach the max slowing effect stacks of Ice Queen Wand with this skill. Luo Yi's second skill is what you need to slow down enemies. Casting this will initially slow down enemies. This is best to slow down enemies when chasing them or to escape death. Also, enemies who stay on the area of effect will receive continuous magic damage. So this is really best to use during team fights. It is recommended buying glowing wand so that there will be an additional burning damage as well. This will make the enemy feel like they are sunbathing under the sun. Take note that when you cast this inside a bush the yin yang circle will not be visible. So, if you step on the second skill of an enemy Luo Yi, you will be receiving the continuous damage without knowing what's hitting you. Luo Yi's ultimate skill is what you need to gank more efficiently with your team. Take note that you can bring allies with you to a specified location within this skill's radius. Just imagine teleporting behind a single enemy with a whole gang. That single enemy will surely be wishing he should have not played Mobile Legends that day. Also, it is recommended teleporting with an ally with great crowd control like Minotaur or Johnson. Take a look on this scenario. We have an ally Johnson that uses his ultimate skill while Luo Yi's ultimate skill is channeling. As you can see, Johnson in car mode was teleported. Just imagine how devastating would that be for the enemy to be hit from behind by Johnson. This is a sure surprise back set to kill the enemy. Also, we do recommend teleporting from a bush to another bush because when you teleport inside a bush the yin yang circle won't be seen by enemies which are outside the bush. Take a look on this scenario. Raki will be using Luo Yi's ultimate skill from inside the bush and teleport into the bush behind us. As you can see, he could have said, surprise mother father. But the point is, you won't see the yin yang mark when Luo Yi casts this inside a bush. Surprise mother father. Also take note that even if Luo Yi is stunned during the teleportation, the teleportation will still proceed. Also take note that casting this skill within the enemy's vision will just make them run away from it. So it's really best to cast this inside a bush or somewhere away from the enemy's vision. Lastly, you can also use this to escape death. Here we are again with our experiments. We have our favorite lab rat, Rakuten, and some guest lab rats, to demonstrate with us some heroes that can greatly counter or dominate Luo Yi in-game. Before we proceed with experimenting against heroes, did you know that when Luo Yi casts her second skill inside a bush, you won't be able to see it unless you are also inside that bush? Also, did you know that Luo Yi's ultimate skill channeling circle won't be visible when she uses it inside the bush? That's how your ex got away from you without you even knowing how. First, let's have Diggy. Let's test if Diggy's second skill can make Luo Yi's ally return after they teleport away. As you can see, Luo Yi's ally returned to the spot before they teleported. This just shows how clingy Diggy can be. Next up we have Kaja. Let's test if we use our ultimate skill on an enemy before they teleport to Neverland. As you can see, the enemy just ignored the fact that Kaja have him under arrest. Kaja was left alone just like how his ex left him. Next, we have Franco. Let's see if Luo Yi's ally Franco could hook an enemy with him. As you can see, we bumped into a non-existent wall. Let's try that again. Still, we still bumped into something. I hope that's not our ex. Next up, we have Silvana. Let's see if Silvana could stop us from teleporting away. As you can see, the one that was held by Silvana's ultimate skill was left behind. This is what happens when someone holds you down in life. You get left behind. Next, we have Minsether. His ultimate skill doesn't allow blinking on its area of effect. Let's see if it will allow us to teleport away from it. As you can see, Luo Yi doesn't follow any rules. Thug life indeed. Next, we have our favorite hero to experiment with, Gord. Let's see if we can teleport Gord while using his ultimate skill. As you can see, Gord is still using his ultimate skill after the teleportation. I don't know why would you want to do this since you can just your ultimate skill after the teleportation. But probably you can use this to protect your allies from enemies while teleporting. Next, we have Zask. Let's see if we can teleport the Nightmaric spawn with us. As you can see, the Nightmaric spawn was left behind. 
The sad thing is it also disappeared, just like your ex. Next, we have Popol and Koopa. Let's see if Koopa will also be included in the teleportation. As you can see, Koopa was also teleported. We never tried if we only teleport Koopa because Koopa would be useless without Popol commanding him. Next, we have Hayabusa. Let's see if we can teleport Hayabusa with us while using his ultimate skill on Freya. As you can see, Hayabusa was still teleported. But he returned back to the target because his ultimate skill is not yet done. Last but not the least, we have Johnson. Let's try if we can teleport Johnson while in car mode. As you can see, we were able to teleport Johnson even if he is already in car mode. So if you are paired up with a Johnson, make sure to teleport behind or near the enemy. Don't forget to shout, surprise, mother father, upon knocking the enemy from behind. In terms of his combo, we just follow a simple combo for Luo Yi. First, ensure that your first skill and second skill have different state. This is to make sure that your initial combo will already stun the target. Then find a target to gank. It would be best if you have an ally or more than to gank with you. Then cast your ultimate skill a little bit behind the enemy, or maybe inside a bush nearby the enemy. This is to ensure that the gank will be executed swiftly. Then, upon landing, use your first skill to mark the enemies with either yin or yang. Then, since your second skill has the opposite state, use it to stun the enemy that will attempt to escape from the horde. Then, spam your first skill to grant you movement speed and shield. This is your only burst damaging skill. So better spam it with no regrets, unlike your ex. Here is another scenario where we executed the same combo. Additional tip, if you are using your ultimate skill, you better be aware of yourself first. Take a look on this scenario. I was focusing on where to teleport to, but the enemies surprised me and sent me to eternity. The tips I mentioned are just some of the ways you can use Luo Yi. This video just guides you on how to use Luo Yi the Kurumi way. We would like to thank our Wakandian brother, Rakuten, and our guest, Lab Rats, for helping us on this boot camp. You can search for them in-game and on their social media accounts. So, once again, this is Kurumi and that's how you use Luo Yi. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to like and share this video. Also subscribe to our channel for more contents by clicking on the subscribe button below. For our skin giveaway events, check out the community tab for the giveaway post. We have our coffee account just in case you want to donate us some coffee funds. Check our coffee link on the description of this video. Please only trust boot camp videos from our official accounts. See you on the next Mobile Legends boot camp. Cheers.